Right. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, introduction to QH, the um, Kubernetes Native Edge Computing Framework. I'm Kevin Wan, the one of the co-founder and the uh, maintainer of QH project. Hey, everyone. Uh, this is Inding. I'm also a co-founder and the maintainer of QBEDGE. Today, I will with Kevin to give you an introduction of QBEDGE. So first, we are going to talk about why we need edge cloud computing. First, it's a low latency because normally the edge is on the remote side and the, the latency back to the cloud will be high. That's why we want a solution that application running on the edge side to reduce this latency. And also because especially with LD edge, a lot of LD data will generate it on the edge side. If we want to migrate all this raw data back to the cloud, we will be a really high cost and drain our bandwidth. To save the bandwidth, we want to generate a solution running on the edge. And also we are really concerned of this uh, privacy and uh, security. A lot of edge side we are running using the data generated on the edge side is including the personal data, business data. That's why we want to pre-processing and mask some data, especially sensible data on the edge to protect the production and the business security. The last and not the least, we're talking about the local autonomy. So because the edge, the naturally will run on the remote, the, inter the connection through internet could be, I mean, interrupt in the middle. So we need a offline solution for the edge side and make it a self recovery when the connection restored. Uh, for the detail of the uh, Kube Edge architecture, we are talking about in the following slides. Uh, for this project itself, we launched it in 2018 and it become a CNCF sandbox project in March, 2019. It graduated from the sandbox into a CNCF incubation in September, 2020. Uh, for now, since the release uh, since the launch until now, we already got uh, more more than five thousand five uh four thousand five hundred stars on GitHub, and uh, one thousand three hundred forks on GitHub, and this including more than eight hundred contributors, uh, more than two hundred twenty code submitters. All these people are from more than sixty thousand organizations. Within our community, we already set up uh, these six, SIG AI, SIG device IoT, SIG Mac, uh, focusing on telecommunication, telecoms. And we have a work group wireless. Since last SAS KubeCon, we set up a new SIG called SIG Robotics. The charter is under review, is focusing on the robotics. Here is the not a complete list of our contributors, adopters. Easily we can see this organization, including hardware, software, cloud provider, telecom, and also academic uh, schools. So we have a great diversified, diversified community. It's organically and healthy. Uh, now we are talking about why we pick Kubernetes as our platform to build on and then with the challenge we, we met, the benefit. So if we want to use a containerized application, it will be easily migrate and build once and run anywhere. It's uh, already uh, recognized by the industry. And based on the Kubernetes, that's already the default standard the Kubernetes for the container optimization orchestration platform. So if we build on Kubernetes, the developer will have the same experience across cloud and edge. They will have the same experience and this to develop the application. And also Kubernetes have this extendable architecture for us to easily 
extended APIs. To build on Kubernetes, of course, we have these challenges. First, the edge probably have the limited resources. Uh, so the resource run of the edge will be constrained. It may not enough to Kubernetes component to run on, for example, Kubelet, Kubel proxy, and other components. And we already talked about unstable network. The connection between the cloud and the edge through the internet may not be stable. So it's different from the network running in the data center. Also, the bandwidth will be limited. Latency will be high. That will be a hard problem for us to conquer. And also, we need autonomy at the edge. Because of this unstable network, so the network could be interrupted in the middle and disconnected, disconnect the edge from the cloud. That's why we need the edge to run autonom autonomously. And also we shouldn't let the control plane to evict or micro application when the detect disconnect is detected. It's different from the behavior running in the cloud. And also because a lot of IoT devices attached to the edge, we need to manage a heterogeneous and a large amount of different devices to attach to the edge. Here is the key features for the, of the Kube Edge. First, we support Kubernetes native API. The developer with, will use the same API to deploy the cloud application and edge application. We provide a seamless cloud edge coordination, edge autonomy, and also we the Kube Edge supports the low resource environment, low resource boxes. And it provides simplified device communication through the device controller. And also it provides a cloud view of these global metrics perform the data and all transfer transfer back to the cloud for user to monitor the edge and also the devices. Now I give the control for Kevin to talk about the Kube Edge architecture. All right. Um, so uh, for Kube Edge actually uh, to uh, do uh, resolve the uh, challenges we observed uh, in, in the last uh, slides, uh, we are actually choosing the uh, remote node architecture. So basically we are putting the uh, node component on the edge because that's uh, much easier to uh, optimize for the uh, resource constraint devices. Um, and also actually uh, the component, the edge core running, running on the edge node is just the all-in-one uh, component. Um, uh, it, it, it takes uh, down to 70 megabytes uh, memory uh, footprint to run, uh, to run. And also the uh, for the container runtime, the uh, all the uh, OCI component uh, container runtime are already uh, verified in integration with Cubage, uh, including the uh, container D, Docker, uh, CRIO, and the control containers. And besides the uh, CNI uh, plugins, we uh, also provide the uh, our own data plan implementation, uh, the uh, edge mesh, uh, which is a simplified uh, uh, framework to uh, to build a connection across uh, private networks. So uh, the application applications on different uh, in the different edge sites and uh, talk to each other uh, with standard uh, Kubernetes uh, service or cluster IP. Uh, in the cloud, actually, we are just uh, using uh, the uh, cloud core to hook uh, any uh, status updates of uh, the nodes and the pods that are running on the edge. So for the Kubernetes uh, component, they would uh, they have no uh, any uh, uh, no no uh, any uh, uh, awareness about the the uh, additional components, they just uh, uh, think that they are managing the, uh, the uh, normal uh, nodes. 
um, for all the nodes that are running on the H and uh, the pods running on the H, a cloud core will forward the uh, uh, request, put them into a message, and they rely on the uh, bi-directional uh, communication channel to sync with the uh, components on the edge. So the default protocol uh, of the channel uh, is WebSocket. We did a very uh, lot of we did a lot of uh, uh, verification and uh, test that uh, it's very uh, stable and uh, can work on very low network, including high package loss the race and the low uh, the high latency uh, network. And also, uh, Quick is introduced as an alternative online protocol to uh, provide the support for corner uh, cases and we are expecting some uh, performance uh, improvement in the uh, longer future. Uh, to simplify the uh, device management management on the edge, actually uh, QVH provided a, a framework to uh, decouple the application age application development and the uh, the device uh, protocols. So mappers, the device mappers are kind of the uh, message, the protocol converters uh, to convert from the real device protocols into a uh, standard uh, message format uh, defined by QBage. So uh, for the applications running on the edge, they just need to uh, know about the data format, the, uh, the topics format of uh, QBage. They don't need to worry about the underlying details of uh, the protocols that are used by each uh, device. Okay, so currently the uh, the uh, built-in protocols are uh, Modbus, Bluetooth, uh, OPC UE, and also the uh, OnBIF, uh, which is a new protocol and introduced this uh, uh, the late in the latest release, and the user are able to. Uh, rely on the extensible uh, mechanism to integrate integrate with their own uh, device protocols. So, um, a little bit more details about the inside the uh, cloud core. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, let me just uh, first uh, uh, introduce a little bit more details about how uh, Cubage run. Uh, applications onto uh, the uh, edge the nodes. So as we know that in vanilla Kubernetes, after a scheduler, scheduler uh, made decision for uh, each pod to find a node, the uh, kubelet on the corresponding uh, node uh, will spin up the, uh, the containers of that pod. While in uh, Cubage, actually, uh, the cloud core will get all the uh, watch events of the pod and the nodes that to be running on the edge, and then uh, send it through the uh, channel between cloud and edge to the uh, right edge node. And the meta manager on the edge node will persist in the, uh, the pod information onto the, uh, into the local uh, uh, lightweight uh, database, which is a, a, a SQLite and then forward the information to the uh, HD, which is a uh, lightweight uh, tablet, and the rest are of the same uh, uh, process uh, comparing to a standard uh, tablet. So with me this mechanism, you can find out actually it's from a pod life cycle, it's actually uh, quite standard uh, comparing with, uh, with the original uh, behavior. Uh, each component, they are just working uh, as normal. They don't need to worry about the other uh, steps uh, added by uh, Cubage. Uh, okay, uh, so inside Cloud Core, actually, uh, one of the very important uh, module is the uh, Cloud Hub. Uh, it deals with the, uh, the uh, message construction and uh, managing the all the connections from the edge node. So uh, makes it able to uh, 
to uh, for the other uh, components talk to uh, each each nodes even though they are located in the private network and uh, the uh, each controller uh, is focusing on the uh, shadow management for the uh, the core APIs of Kubernetes, actually the uh, the the nucleus uh, APIs, including the nodes, pods, uh, config and uh, config maps and the secrets, etc. And also the uh, device controller is uh, 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 rely responsible for providing the uh, device API lifecycle implementation for uh, provided by Cubage and also. Uh, uh, focus on uh, the shadow management for uh, all the devices on the uh, on the edge, and the sync uh, sync controller is uh, is uh, responsible for uh, detecting any uh, inconsistency between cloud and edge, and uh, trigger uh, additional synchronization to make sure uh, the edge is up to date. Uh, one thing worth mentioning that is actually uh, Cubage is uh, kind of uh, full-time uh, diff-based uh, synchronization between cloud and edge. Uh, so to avoid the uh, any uh, network consumption peak uh, uh, caused by uh, released from the uh, list watch mechanism, so which, it, uh, which can uh, make the whole system uh, stable and uh, work well in a very uh, limited bandwidth, Environment or uh, uh, high latency, high package loss uh, environment. The CSI driver is uh, plugging to uh, to uh, hook the storage provisioning request uh, that is uh, required by the CSI plugins on each. And uh, the mission web hook is uh, to uh, enforce the best practice. For example, simplify the configuration of uh, the pod autonomy uh, 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 policy. Um, the oops. Um, the uh, uh, components in the actually the modules inside Edge Core uh, are the Edge uh, uh, Hub, which is a, a symmetric implementation of uh, Cloud Hub. The meta manager is one of the most important part inside the uh, cloud core, which uh, focuses on uh, uh, managing the node level uh, uh, metadata persistency and also provide the lightweight Kubernetes API server for all the applications, uh, especially uh, operators that are running on the edge. Uh, that means that all the uh, operators and the uh, applications on the edge are they are they are actually getting data from the local meta, uh, database which is, uh, less uh, reliability on the uh, communication and the network uh, between cloud and the edge. And the uh, HD is a lightweight uh, kubelet. We removed some legacy and uh, redundant uh, implementation. Uh, of vanilla kilowatt. And the device screen is uh, to deal with uh, uh, device status uh, synchronization between cloud and edge. So for the uh, edge core overall, uh, it takes down to 70 megabyte memory footprint, which is uh, quite lightweight. Uh, you can, you are uh, able to run on uh, run the whole uh, setup on um, uh, 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 edge box down to 256 megabyte memory. Okay, um, so uh, for the new features, uh, since we lost the net, um, okay, for the uh, features, new features, since we uh, lost the net in the, uh, the Cubicon EU, uh, this May, we got, uh, we made very uh, good progress on enabling a larger scale cluster. Uh, so you are now able to support multi-active uh, uh, deployment uh, uh, cloud core. So you can have basically have multiple uh, 
cloud core instances are working together at the same time to manage the uh, nodes on the edge. And also uh, for the matter, mapper, device mapper framework, we upgraded the, uh, the uh, overall architecture to simplify the, uh, the new mapper development. So you are now able to use uh, one command to generate a new uh, mapper uh, code skeleton, and then you can add your, your own uh, uh, code. And also for uh, the applications uh, running on the edge, uh, we are providing a custom message routing mechanism between cloud and edge. So this is very useful when you have some uh, applications in the cloud or in the edge that want to access uh, the other components in, 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 the, in, in the different location. Uh, especially when you want to call some external uh, services in the cloud from the edge. And also um, in this release, we uh, support the uh, HTTP request. And in the longer term, we are going to support more uh, protocols for the applications. And also for the uh, data plan of QVH, the, uh, the edge mesh project, uh, we decoupled the, the uh, implementation from the main repo into a separated repo to uh, to make it more uh, focused on providing the, uh, the data plan, the network functionalities. To, uh, so uh, with the new edge mesh, you are now able to enable the uh, applications in different uh, subnet, talk with each other, using uh, Kubernetes service mechanism or, or relying on the, on the cluster IP. The underlying network, they will automatically uh, rely on the, uh, the able P2P to uh, build connections uh, across different private network to make sure uh, every part can find each other. Okay, uh, for the SIGs and sub projects, uh, the SIG AI uh, is recently focusing on the uh, Sedna project development. We got two uh, new release uh, published uh, since we last met. And uh, the SIG MEC and also the wireless working group, they are currently focusing on the uh, reference architecture uh, rely, uh, uh, relevant to the uh, alcohols and also, especially some. Uh, weak uh, network situation uh, with the node uh, keep changing the location. And also the uh, uh, the, the device IoT SIG, as I said, uh, we are keep working on the uh, device management framework and also simplify, trying to simplify the device mappers uh, development. Uh, for the new SIG, the robotics, we are under discussion about the, uh, the SIG charter, uh, to uh, clarify uh, what to do and uh, also uh, to indicate where we are. And uh, yeah, and the sub project, uh, Stedna and uh, HMesh, we already covered. Okay, so uh, just uh, some uh, basic information about the Stedna project. So this project is actually kind of an AI toolkit on top of uh, CubeAge to uh, provide the edge cloud collaboration and edge cloud uh, synergy mechanism for uh, AI workloads. Um, we know that the resources on the uh, edge today are still very limited. So we, uh, while we have uh, rich services and uh, rich uh, hash rates, the, the computing power in the cloud, so, uh, uh, when don't we are uh, we when we are not uh, satisfied with the uh, inferencing uh, accuracy on the edge, we and uh, with uh, the Sedna uh, project, we can easily uh, fall back to the uh, cloud to uh, achieve the joint uh, inferencing uh, for uh, for your day-to-day uh, -day, uh, AI workload, and also uh, it's uh, it helps simplify the incremental learning uh, 
in, in your day-to-day -day, uh, uh, application running, uh, basically collect uh, any of the uh, samples uh, or the, uh, the, the hard information uh, and the trigger the cloud uh, training and then update the, the models on each. And also in the recent two releases, we introduced the, the lifelong uh, learning model to uh, to uh, extend the uh, the data, the sample collection, and also the uh, model uh, training upgrade uh, iteration. And also we uh, uh, enhance the federation uh, federated learning to support more uh, scenarios. Uh, for the robotic SIG, currently we are still under discussion, but basically we want to uh, focus on the uh, uh, API definition and the reference architecture as well as implementation uh, relevant to robotics uh, ecosystem to achieve the uh, uh, edge cloud collaborative, collaborative architecture or uh, robot cloud uh, collaborative architecture. So the, uh, as a very beginning, we may uh, focus on uh, containerizing the, some of the uh, softwares, including the, the uh, iOS and the Gateable. And also, uh, you are more than welcome to join the discussion and uh, uh, leave your comments to this uh, secret chapter. Okay, uh, so for uh, the use case, I just want to update uh, one of the adoption that we uh, 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 used on the uh, world's longest uh, cross sea bridge. So it's a C, uh, and it's actually a, a bridge tunnel system uh, with a very uh, low network quality. They don't have uh, cables though, so, so everything need to be, uh, every communication need to be uh, uh, done with uh, uh, each uh, the, the the network or uh, the uh, the four G network. Uh, there are a lot of uh, sensors on the uh, bridge to uh, monitor the uh, the metrics of the bridge itself, and also the uh, environment, and also uh, track the traffic to. To, uh, to uh, generate a lot if the if there's any uh, emergency or, or if uh, there's any uh, uh, traffic uh, situation. And also uh, uh, the environment uh, we need to uh, track to make sure uh, the, the bridge is, uh, is in a good situation. So uh, with the uh, device uh, framework, um, all the uh, sensors are uh, implemented, uh, the, the drivers are implemented as the uh, US mappers to, uh, to decouple the uh, underlying bus protocol with uh, uh, applications. So the age applications, they can just uh, focus in on uh, 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 analysis based on the data collected or uh, uh, working on the uh, AI uh, model to uh, generate some uh, inferencing uh, results uh, to uh, send it to the cloud. And uh, in the cloud, they can uh, kind of achieve the uh, global monitoring, global metrics, and also a higher level uh, analysis based on the uh, big data. Okay, so uh, for the longer term, uh, the data plan is definitely uh, very important. So we will keep enhancing the age mesh project to uh, provide the, uh, to simplify the cross uh, uh, subnet communication and also to uh, uh, enhance the storage, storage integration to, uh, to achieve the uh, age, age cloud collaborative uh, storage and also uh, in, uh, in, uh, enhance the uh, more uh, secure uh, age protection as well as providing the decentralized security uh, functionality for applications across the age. And also uh, device uh, management is definitely very important. Uh, we are going to support more uh, device protocols as well as uh, simplify the 
the uh, development uh, uh, of the uh, method. Uh, for the community, we will uh, uh, host more contributor uh, events, uh, as well as improving the uh, contributor experience. And uh, uh, for uh, the cl uh, collaboration with the other community uh, besides LFH, especially uh, Acrino, uh, we are planning to uh, integrate, uh, to have more uh, collaboration with Ajax Foundry, uh, Acre, Watson H, and Eclipse Foundation. All right, um, so that's for, uh, that's for about the uh, introduction to the project. So nowadays we are uh, updated really uh, uh, developing on uh, on GitHub and also we are relying uh, heavily on uh, Slack to uh, discuss about the uh, technical stuff. Uh, you are more than welcome to join our uh, uh, community and uh, uh, please have a try uh, of this project, if you have not yet uh, tried that. All right, um, that's all about the introduction. Thank you for listening and uh, uh, that's this the Q and A time.